Inverse Relations and Functions To find an inverse of a function, given a set of ordered pairs, we need to switch the x and y coordinates. So if we want to find the inverse of this function, all we need to do is switch the x and y's. So we have the point negative 3, 0, the point negative 1, 1, the point 1, 2, the point 3, 3, and the point 5, 4. I want you to go ahead and pause, try the second example on your own, and then check back with me when you finish. So hopefully you made your table and your x coordinates are now negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, and your y coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now we want to find the inverse of a function given a graph. And to do that, we need to reflect the function over the line y equals x. So the first thing you need to do is graph the line y equals x. And then you want to look at your function and see if it intersects that line y equals x. If it does, I want you to select that point. And then we need to select one other point that's not on the line. So I'm going to use this point because this looks like it crosses right at that point. So we're going to count straight down towards that line y equals x. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we want to reflect this way 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, Because we know that it's going to end up diagonally across here. So once we have these two points, our straight line is going to intersect those two points. Okay. Now I want you to try example four and check back with me when you're finished. Follow the same steps we just did. So hopefully first you graph the line y equals x and then you use that point of intersection and then plotted another point. You didn't have to use the exact one that I did as long as you remember to count exactly so that it's crossing over that line diagonally, okay? Now to find the inverse of a function given an equation, we want to switch the x and y variables and solve for y. So in this first example, we're going to switch the x and y. So x equals negative 5, y plus 7. And then we're going to solve the equation for y. So we want to subtract 7 from both sides. And then we have x minus 7 equals negative 5y. And then to isolate the y, divide both sides by 5. And so again, we can either put this entire side over one fraction or divide each of these individually. But don't forget to divide each term by negative 5. So on the left side, we have a negative 1 fifth x. Negative 7 divided by negative 5. We can't simplify that fraction, except we know negative numbers divided by negative numbers are positive numbers. So we're just going to leave it as positive 7 fifths equals y. And then here is our final answer. So I want you to go ahead and try example 6 and then check back with me when you finish. So first you should switch your x and y variables and then we need to solve for y. So subtract 7 from both sides and you get x minus 7 equals 1 third y. Now remember, I know you want to divide by 1 third but we don't divide by fractions. Instead we multiply by reciprocals, so multiply by 3 on this side so that those cancel out and you're just left with the y. But we also need to multiply the other side by 3. Now remember, when we have those two terms, just like we did over here by dividing each one, we need to put parentheses around here so that we can distribute that 3 to the x to get 3x and also to the negative 7 to get negative 21. So this should have been your final answer. Now let's walk through this last one together. So we see this f of x. That actually stands for our y. 
So when we switch our variables, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, We'll make this y minus 1. And then to get rid of the square root, we need to square both sides. And then we add 1 to both sides. So we end up with x squared plus 1 equals y. Now, the actual notation for an inverse is f of x to the negative 1 exponent equals, and then we'll put our inverse function, 2x plus 1. So this is actually how we write our inverse functions. Okay. Next, let's talk about the horizontal line test. This is similar to the vertical line test, but the horizontal line test tests whether the inverse is a function. So if a horizontal line passes through more than one point on the graph of a relation, then the inverse of the relation is not a function. So these are the same graphs we talked about last time, but again, we're dealing with this horizontal line. Previously, we would have learned that this is not a function, and this one is. However, when we're talking about the inverses, the horizontal line test shows that the inverse of this graph is a function. Now when we check the purple one, as we do the horizontal line test, immediately we're crossing through more than one point on the graph. That means the inverse of this purple function is not a function. Lastly, we want to use composition to verify that f of x and g of x are inverses. f of g of x and g of f of x both need to equal x if the two functions are inverses of each other. So let's walk through this first one together. We have to do both combinations. So first, let's do f of g of x. So we want to take f and put g of x inside of it. So we're going to start with the f function, and when we get to that x, we're going to substitute in g of x. And now we're going to simplify. We need to distribute that 1 half. Multiplying by half is like dividing by 2. So we get x minus 2 plus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0, so we end up with x. So this one works. So let's check the other one, g of f of x. So we start off with the g function, and when we get to that x, we need to substitute in the f function, 1 half x plus 2, minus 4. And in this case, we're going to need to distribute that 2. So 2 times a half cancels, and we're left with x. And then 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, so we're left with x, and this one also works. I want you to go ahead and try example 9, and then check back with me when you're finished. So hopefully when you found f of g of x, it should work out. So you get x, g of f of x, you should also get x. And so these are inverses of each other. That's it. Make sure to submit any questions in you, if you have any, and then I'll see you next class.